welcome to another episode of Hard Factor. It is September 7th, episode 766. We got Pat, we got Mark. Will is on vacation still, taking a taking a relaxing Labor Day. But uh, I think he'll be back tomorrow, so uh, he can uh, he can scream me in. How you guys doing? I'm doing great. How about doing you? great, Wes. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. It's nice. I'm ready. For- how, how are you doing? Yeah. How I'm doing are you? Good. I'm okay. Mark and I were wondering how you're doing. I'm doing okay. I'm all right. You know, could be better. Sometimes you're, you know, <laughs> if you're the only one asking and no one's asking you, maybe you're not doing great. So yeah, maybe you you really just asking because you want us to ask you right back. How are you yeah, doing, Wes? That's right. That's what I. You know, what's funny is I uh, I reached out to my uh, my therapist the other day because I wanted to play some golf, and I think that's what he's thinking. He's like, I haven't heard from that guy in forever. Why is he asking me to suddenly play golf? Oh, boy. So, yeah. He's oh, boy. He's going back. through some yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, am I going through some stuff? <laughs> is this all subconscious? Do I really need to talk to this guy? Wait, wait. You play golf with your therapist? No, he, he we've always yeah, talked about when it. I lose my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I want some free advice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no we it, seems always, there, <laughs> it seems like there should be a boundary there. No. Oh, you God, you sound like my girlfriend. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. She's always about you. You guys are just way too. You know, I don't I haven't seen him in a long time, but it's like, yeah, he, it, boundaries need to be set. He's not your buddy. He's your therapist. Wait, blah, you, blah, blah. wait you fuck your therapist. <laughs> you got to set some boundaries there. You don't mean your girlfriend have in common, Wes, What's your that? best interest at heart. That's what yes, we have. I know. I know. I know. So what did he say? Did he take you up on your golf? No, no, he, he he ducked me. He said, I'm going to New York this week. And I said, OK, well, hit me up when you get back. And then I got crickets. <laughs> <laughs> your, your therapist is ghosting you. <laughs> He's ghosting me. He knows Wes will come back to what he needs. That yeah, therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows we'll see him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's how like when the, you how was the golf without me? Yeah. Right. You mm-hmm. hit your weed dealer up to hang out. <laughs> he brings weed. And then you're just like, I just want to hang out. Yeah. And then he's like, you just want free weed, man. Yeah. It's, it's exactly like slow. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we got a lot today, right? We got a lot of stuff to cover. A lot of news. Mm-hmm. Should we just get into it? Sure. I think so. That's why we're here, right? I think yeah. so too. Cup of coffee in the big time. All right. Uh, so we're going to do the news. And um, I like that fun fact of the day yesterday. So I found one for you guys. And it's really just for Pat. Um, so fun fact, the longest poop ever recorded was 26 feet long. Uh, in 1995, a woman in Ann Arbor, Michigan worked in conjunction with nutritionists to eat a super fiber rich diet to set a world record for the longest single turd. I don't buy it, dude. She, she successfully shit a 26 foot long turd, which happens to be the exact length of her colon. So she was all clogged up. Did she do it like over a grocery store conveyor belt? Like, how do you Hmm. get it? I hope I hope she was walking slowly. (laughs) She's She's on like a trolley. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Come on, man. Like she would need some sort of like um, good for her. Some sort of like uh, decelerating ramp dragging behind her because the distance between your um, b-hole and the ground would I mean, ultimately, we'd end up cutting and I imagine that was a stipulation of the of the record is to keep. Oh, it. if it breaks, yeah, you're in trouble. You got to restart the diet and everything. I mean, yeah, twenty six you feet. You're getting real. Nit, you're getting real nitpicky at twenty six feet. <laughs> you <laughs> when, know, when you like, said Jesus, was it real thin? When you said she oh, worked, had to have been thin. <laughs> yeah, so thin. When yeah. uh, when you said she it's worked like hemorrhoid with shit nutritionists yeah. like. So, she worked with uh, with nutritionists on a fiber rich diet. Yeah. They said, yeah, we're in. We're- yeah. You want to set the record? We got you. <laughs> you had I said, I want to set the. They they tested her. They were like, how serious are you? They were like they gave her the- <laughs> before they accepted it. They put her through it. Uh, but I guess she was serious enough that they accepted her. So that's the fun fact. fact check today. that fact. That's man. amazing. That's- yeah. There's a lot of poop facts. I, I went with that one. But uh, let's get into the daily observances holidays first of all um it's rosh rosh hashanah today there so it's a two-day that's the two-day holiday that starts sundown september 6th and it's the celebration for the jewish new year so today celebrating the jewish new year Boom. Well, happy exactly. new year baby september's a big month for jewish holidays they got yom kippur coming up in about a week or so and like three other ones later in the month september's yeah. their month i always My say su- yom kippur because um, kippur I, I don't know. I don't know how you say it exactly, but Yom Kippur, it rolls a little better than Yom Kippur. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm horrible with pronunciations. I, it could be one or either of those. So yeah. we'll go with it. Yeah, I'm Kapoor. I think it is. Yeah, my son goes to a school with a lot of Jews, and he's always getting off these holidays. Which September is September is their him. month. Yeah, yeah. big yeah. month for them. <laughs> uh, right when school starts. All right, here's the other ones. Uh, today's another look, unlimited day. I don't know what that means. Another look on limited day. Okay. Uh, Google commemoration day. Cause they need a day. Grandma Moses day, national acorn squash day. It's, just, it's getting close to fall. It's a little mm -hmm. bit early for acorn squash. If yeah, you ask really. me. National attention deficit disorder awareness day. Thank you. There you go. Your mm -hmm. day, Pat, uh, national beer lovers day, mm. Mm. national feel the love day, national grateful patient day. So maybe stop asking your therapist out to golf and just be grateful. You're a patient of this one, <laughs> uh, <laughs> national threatened species day, national snow or rain day. I guess that might be like a USPS thing. What is that? Snow or rain yeah, will still be there. It is for sure. Yeah. It's, why don't we just say postal day? Huh? Uh, and then salami day today, superhuman day and telephone Tuesday, the day after Labor Day. I think that's a little shot at you're going to be busy at work today. <laughs> mm. Grateful yeah. patient is uh, it's the aggressive converse of like appreciate a nurse day. You know, yeah. like normally it's appreciated nurse, but this is grateful patient day. It's a little bit more aggressive because the nurse can come in and be like, it's fucking grateful patient day. Did you know? Yeah, maybe wipe your own ass today in the, in the hospital type day. Yeah. I'm getting Thank arthritis her. from wiping your ass so Thank much. Thank her. Him, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's move on to today in history. Um, so how about this? In 1191, way back then during the Third Crusade, the Battle of Arsuf went down where Richard I of England defeated the Sultan of Egypt, Saladin, at Arsuf. So, you know, the Crusades. Okay. Yeah, third one. Everyone remembers that one, right? Uh, how about this then? Uh, on September 7th, 1630, the city of Boston, Massachusetts was founded. And then they had a tea party a little later and clam chowder fans and Irish people would flock there. And that's, you know, that's basically how it went down. 1630, Boston. And then surely everyone should know this, right? This will get the people going. On September 7th, 1812, the Battle of Borodino. Uh, who was the general for that? The Battle of Borino. Borodino. Borodino. I, I know man. it because I read ahead. It's Napoleon. But. None other than Will's favorite historical figure, Napoleon Bonaparte, who defeated Russian General Mikhail Kutuzov, uh, but at quite a cost, as it was the bloodiest of the Napoleonic era battles, with 70,000 people <laughs> lost in that battle. Oof. Napoleon Jeez. was just throwing his chess pieces out. He like, uh, he's like, shoot, shoot. Yeah, we'll, we'll kill some of ours, but we'll kill some of theirs type thing. Yeah. But he won. And then on September 7th, 1996, Tupac Shakur was shot six times in a drive by in Las Vegas after a Mike Tyson fight. And he would pass away six days later. So that's when he was mm. shot September 7th. R.I.P. Tupac. Yeah, indeed. Um, honorable mentions. We have uh, we have two. Uh, this cat here. Let me find him. Uh, was the ring bearer at a wedding this weekend. Check mm -hmm. him out. Yeah, check that guy out. He's in his tux and he's zipped up in like a, a stroller, like a book bag stroller, because otherwise he would run away with those rings forever, ruining the wedding. <laughs> yeah, <no shame. laughs> yeah, I like Very how they legal. pretend that the cat did its job, but really it was just a prisoner wheeled through the wedding. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's all it was. There was another cat that was like free in the back room that was laying on top of the construction and like fucking with the cat uh but congratulations to diana and nick of somewhere in the u.s who are cat parents and now newlyweds good for so you guys that trended yeah. that, that was that was trending on the internet i imagine it's my it's my show today pat uh oh, so yeah. you know i i yeah. get it trended trended with me it went viral on tick uh twitter it got like a hundred and something thousand went likes. viral at my house yeah i can't I tell you it. how many times i've been in a wedding and there's been like one of these like cutesy like ring bear situations like a lot of them is like a baby that can barely sit up is being pulled in a wagon by like his older sister, older brother, and the and the wagon either topples over that or there's like slows down the show, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean it's it's, it's yeah. chaos. It's, I don't fucking could, get that. Have you that seen either. a cat? Have you seen? Yeah, a, no, I haven't seen, seen a cat. cat. I've seen I've seen a dog that in yeah. a, in a in a in a um in a in like a wheelbarrow or a, a wagon, but never a cat. Did the I, dog ever like run away? Like or like? No, the, the 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 little girl pulled the thing up too high, and the the old dog. It was like a like a nineteen year old dog. They just had to have in the wedding, and it like toppled over twice. And the groom's like freaking out because the dog is like just so old, and the little girl's just does doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. She's doing a terrible job, and the dog's <laughs> falling out of the wagon, and it's like chaos. I, it's just I mean it was great for who, me, but who 
who topples more regularly, an old dog or a baby? Babies, babies. I don't, I don't get it, man. I, I like, I, I get. I get like the parents walking someone down an aisle. I kind of get a flower girl, but like it's not their day. You know, let's not make it about them. Let's keep it focused on the bride and the groom. Right. We got we got to make it about someone's fucking niece or nephew or some their stupid kid. Yeah, exactly. Oh, they're so cute. It's not about that. Okay? <laughs> they are cute. It keeps them occupied. It makes them like want to not cry because they have to do a job. So but then like help. you're like obligated to invite them to the fucking reception. And yeah. then, yeah, yeah. things got to be PG on the dance floor, which yeah. I don't like. Yeah, it can get messy. All right. Second honor. Second and last honorable mention is uh, guess who wants to live forever. Hmm. Guess. Elon. Elon. Close. Not me. Bald Bezos. Uh, Jeff Bezos, Bezos, has Bezos a, the billionaire? Very close. He's invested in his second startup company now that uh, is like all about anti-aging and living forever. It's called Altos Labs, and um, they're they're paying their scientists a million dollars a year to do like uh, stem cell anti-aging stuff to like make people potentially live forever. <laughs> and Bezos is all in, of course. He's scary, man. He's a scary yeah, dude. It's not good, right? Like that's a red flag. He's he wants this to be sending. He's got some more dick pics to send. He's not done yet um so he's like uh you yeah, know living forever that's important but what hair regrowth let's start at hair regrowth that's a sign uh of of anti-aging there's 100 percent chance he gets like weekly updates on how the hair transplant part is working for this company <laughs> exactly yeah. what if it's just a ruse for him to start rocking a toupee it could be that it could be it could be you know, you can't it's embarrassing to just go no toupee to toupee, especially in this day of social media. But if you start this foundation or company or whatever, like right. kind of well, gives you an excuse. Smoke screen. Th this is the second company he's invested in. He invested in one in 2018 that I don't even know if is around anymore. But this company hired uh, like this Asian and I want to say Japanese scientist. And they did their work already on mice and it's worked. So like they've they've like invented like uh, anti-aging in mice and they're paying like this Asian scientist like buku bucks and anyone that works underneath him a million dollars a year to uh to, to make rich people like Bezos live forever. So good I mean, luck. It's kind of like just inviting snake oil salesmen, right? Like you're like if it's just a huge window of opportunity if you're a flim flam man to get in there for a couple of years make a couple million in your two years there and then say, yeah, I guess it didn't work. Absolutely. And I think we have another like kind of flim flammy story coming up later with Wes. Is that correct? Yes. I would, another, I would say another so. billionaire with, artist. with a grand yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's move into number three here. Um, it's our uh, I don't, I don't want to say friend anymore. It's Ron Jeremy. Uh, turns out the infamous porn star known as the hedgehog is a total piece of shit. Uh, I felt like we had to do this one because we've talked about him before on the show, and I don't think we gave him enough uh, shit uh, before. I think we we're a little too easy on him. What's going on currently in his criminal case is he's accused of raping like 50 women. Yeah. Like not like assaulting them, but like full on rape. Here's him in June 2020. Oh. I guess it came out this week in the unsealed grand jury testimony of 21 women that Ron Jeremy had an M.O. that would make. Ben Roethlisberger blush. Uh, he was a popular regu regular at the Rainbow Bar and Grill on the Sunset Strip in West Hollywood, where he had permission to use the employee bathroom in the back, which was nice. Uh, he would lure women there by offering them pictures and autographs to the bar, and then he would show them the kitchen where the restaurant made its famous pizzas, and then would take them to the employee bathroom that only the only bathroom open after last call to probably lure them into pee and do drugs. And then he would stand at the door and then rape them. Uh, mm. Oh, I've been to the Rain rainbow room many times. Dingy I, establishment. Did you go to the back? No, I room? didn't. But this, he's like, this is like white trash. Bill Cosby, man. This is like, I was bad. You know how Bill Cosby had like a special place in a lot of people's hearts because the Cosby show and kids, say the darndest things ron jeremy's similar in a different way right he was like he was like your creepy old grandfather but apparently that rapes well everyone fell in love with him on that show the uh the, like the rehab or like the the yeah the, what he was on like a reality celebrities show and celebrities yeah. and yeah, yeah. Rehab he's, like, he's like he's like yeah yes with with uh with uh what's his name vanilla um, ice was there yeah. i think mm -hmm. yep. exactly yeah so the he was like a, he was like yeah surreal life he was like a sweetheart on there right he's like a he he's, looks like a nice guy he's a charismatic funny guy but he's yeah. also a monster uh, right. he's a monster so yeah. he played the guy he played the date rapist in the music video for date rape from sublimes uh oh, wow. 40 ounces to freedom Ooh. do you think that like 
That changed. He, he's like, he what like, do you think? He's like, you think he's like Heath Ledger? Like he's he, a method actor that just he, changed him? I think maybe it was like he was like, this is so on the nose that no that no one will then suspect me of being a date rapist. Yeah. No, what he a, didn't date rape them. He just didn't he just let them out of the them. door. He just raped them. Mm. Uh, con- they were conscious. Um, that was his main method, apparently. But he also showed up to some women's hotels, hotel rooms, allegedly uninvited. Like he would get information like, what hotel are you staying at? And then the next day, just appear at their room. And she was like, I didn't tell you what room I was at. And he's like, I have connections everywhere in this town. Uh, and he also apparently did a number of creepy things like that. But his main thing was the Rainbow Room employee bathroom. Good job, Rainbow Room. Uh, number two, let's move on. Uh, number two is Tom Selleck. Did you guys hear anything about Tom Selleck yesterday, today? I only s- I saw a video of him crushing a uh, baseball uh, yes. back from back in the day. Yes, from, I think that was, was a Detroit Mr. Tigers. Yes, the, the Tigers, yeah. What he was, was that movie? He was Mr. Baseball, yeah, and he Mr. played Mr. in Japan baseball. and set a bunch of records and married a Japanese woman that was the coach's daughter, I think. Great movie. But that video came out. But also, I, I, he broke the internet on mon- on Labor Day. Um, it proved once again that people can't be normal and that no one can get along on the internet or in life currently so much so like that Tom Selleck's handsome mustache, at, ha, handsome mustache ass caused a giant meltdown on Twitter. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened besides that one baseball video or when it happened, but I think like high level Tom Selleck basically gave uh, kind of like a an interview and his answers were very conservative. And one of his answers was like, I give all of my lifelong success to Jesus Christ and stuff like that. And that started a reaction from the left where they started attacking Tom Selleck for being a Trump supporter, an NRA member, a shiller for reverse mortgages, a company he's worked for <laughs> and like done commercials for promoting reverse. Mortgages. Oh, yeah. He's the reverse mortgage king, him exactly. and Montel. Exactly. And a Jesus freak. And then the right attacked the left for being soulless, godless, whiny pussies. Let's take a look at the Internet talking about Tom Selleck on Monday. So let's go. uh, We'll go with the right first here. Uh, Nick Adams says the godless left is attacking Tom Selleck because he stands for everything they despise. American exceptionalism, masculinity, (laughs) conservatism, the troops, God and liberty. This is a checkmark. Masculinity. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Exceptionalism. Yeah. And then Bridget Gabriel, another checkmark, says uh, Tom Selleck is a great conservative American and patriot. It's uh, pathetic liberals that are attacking him for saying he owes all of his success to Jesus Christ. The left is godless. And then the left came back and said stuff like, I don't know which asshole made Tom Selleck trend, but I'm here to remind you he's still pro-gun, anti-LGBT, is shady towards strong opinionated females, and he scams seniors with reverse mortgages. (laughs) And then we continue. Uh, Let's go with some more left. It says, uh, Scary Larry says, the only difference between Tom Selleck and the MyPillow guy is Tom Selleck used to be attractive or used to be considered attractive. Uh, Jody NYC says, way back in the 80s, I was sitting in a completely empty airline lounge in Europe, and Tom Selleck sat down next to me i smiled and said hello he looked right through me as if i wasn't even there <laughs> i always thought that said a lot about his lack of character he got pretty personal oh, there that's <laughs> didn't awesome forget that yeah no i've made, I've made my waiting, mind up. he was waiting for Selleck the trend yeah. yeah after that tweet yeah exactly and then let's let's finish with some more from the right uh amy mech says I wonder if the spineless anti-Christian left would trash Tom Selleck if he said he owes all his success to the prophet Muhammad instead of Jesus Christ. Oh, that's right. They would be too scared. Those who question Muhammad are harmed by Muslim supremacists and the left. So just people losing their fucking minds over Tom Selleck's things. I feel like uh, none of those tweets are accurate. No, whatsoever. they're all people just shouting at, at, the, at, at the Internet, like what, um, publicly. I do hate masculinity. You know that. But what um, <laughs> it intimidates me. Yeah. Uh, what did he actually do, though? Because we know he's a reverse mortgage hound. Uh, I don't know. I think it like the, the right is claiming that it was the fact that he credited Jesus Christ with giving him a, a, a good life. I think it could be that 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 could have started it. It could have been the baseball video where everyone's praising him. it could have been the reverse. It could have been anything. It just it, it's sometimes this happens and then and then it causes a, a, a crazy reaction from one side and then an equally crazy reaction from the other. And then it just spins and spins and spins. This is also and, left over. If you remember when he got in the spat with Rosie O'Donnell, um, which was which was she called him out famous. Yeah. She called him out. That was like over the NRA, I believe. And yes. they got into a big thing. So he's always been kind of like an enemy of the left ever since that. So they're any oper- waiting for something. Yeah, they're right? waiting yeah. for something. And else. then the right's waiting to defend him. Yeah. So, hey, it was great, great stuff from both sides on Labor Day. You fucking idiots. I guess they were bored. <laughs> <laughs> 
And the number one trend, not as funny, not as good. Um, the cream of the crop today is Michael Williams, the badass actor from um he became i guess mostly well known for his incredible portrayal of omar little on hbo's the wire was found dead in his apartment at the age of 54 on labor day he also started a number of other hbo series like boardwalk empire the night of and love lovecraft country he was in a bunch of movies including inherent vice 12 years a slave gone baby gone and the road he won three emmys for best supporting actor and was constantly nominated for awards because he was just a really good fucking actor he was he was awesome uh williams was born in brooklyn his mother was from the Bahamas and his father was from South Carolina. He received a large scar on his face that he's, you know, his signature, uh, that scar on his face after he got knifed when trying to intervene in a fight outside a bar on his 25th birthday. Uh, he started his entertainment career getting jobs, dancing and music videos for big artists like George Michael's Madonna before getting cast in his first film role as Tupac Shakur's brother in the 1996 film Above Bullet. the Rim. Oh, damn. A bullet. And we heard earlier that uh, that later that same year, Tupac was shot on today's date. And that is today's mm. cup of coffee. Uh, it was brought to you by Full Bore BBQ, Full Bore Barbecue. Full Bore Barbecue is proof that American the American dream is still alive when you have a superior product mixed with unstoppable work ethic. What started with a group of high school friends trying their hand at a local barbecue competition has now turned into a company that is trusted everywhere. It is known to make you the star of your backyard. No doubt about it. It's also the official sponsored barbecue sauce rub and just barbecue company of hard factor um they have classic flavors with that extra something that puts them over the top they have a wall of trophies and hardware to prove it uh they also have us eating it constantly to tell you it's good uh over thirty thousand units sold and enjoyed nationwide just in the past year it's the best damn rubs and sauces you will ever allow to tickle your taste buds and working with with them it's just one small business trying to support another they can be found at almost 300 retail stores check their website for local information please read their story and check out their unique recipes on their website uh rub it in follow them on instagram at full bore bbq products for fan features and at full bore bbq to see more of their work they're offering hard factor listeners 10 percent off the entire order uh using promo code factor so stop forcing down that sweet baby raise and support a fellow hard factor listener by visiting full bore bbq products.com that's full bore like a pig bbq products.com to order yours today and hey guys let's barbecue everything you know what I'm saying? <laughs> come on i made some chicken thighs earlier with the uh with their uh like garden barn and rub thing oh my god so mm. good i used the same thing actually to make chicken yeah last evening too it was fantastic um hey guys we're gonna get into the tiktok international moment here in a second but real quick, just wanted to bring you up to date, promise we would, on what's going on in the Panjashir Valley. So the Taliban has claimed uh, victory. However, uh, Mossad and uh, his followers, the um, NRF, are saying that the fight continues. So we'll keep you updated as it comes. Not too much new, but uh, they are continuing to fight in uh, in the Panjashir Valley. So good luck. They're fighting with, you know, they're now fighting one of the most equipped militaries in the entire world, thanks to us. So good luck to them. Yeah, good luck to them. Uh, okay, let's get into the... It's time for the TikTok International Moment. Hell nice. yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Every time. Every nice. time does it to me. All right, guys, we're going to go around the world. We're going to go around the world. Uh, first, we're going to take it um, over to Israel and then to Afghanistan again. And then back to Israel. So really, we're just going to keep it in the Middle East, what I meant to say. It's going to just be in the general Middle East area. So, guys, in an absolute slap in the face to the proverb, two heads are better than one, a set of Israeli twin girls conjoined at the head were separated safely on Thursday in the first, I repeat, first operation of its kind. So huh. there you Thank go. You. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, guys, despite major advances in modern science in the last 250 years, the operation was performed by the guillotine. The French device is perhaps stop. best <laughs> known stop. for its use in beheadings, <laughs> but it's also extremely uh, effective in deheadings, which is what mm. this was. So um, the one year old girls were forced to immediately renounce their Siamese citizenship or um, tie, as it's known today. Um, when the docs were asked which twin got the brain wishbone, uh, they smiled coyly and said, I guess you'll have to keep up with the girls to find out, adding that both girls um, are expected to live completely normal lives whoa so, wow really holy shit they survived 
Damn. Yep. It was a guillotine. Survived, what? Clean so. cut. Miracle. Back of the head. They were attached to the back of the head. This I is loved the watching first it. It, in in that part of the world or the first in the world? Period. Well, uh, Siamese twins, excuse me, uh, conjoined twins. It's yeah. not a proper term anymore. Conjoined twins, very rare in the first place. And then um, this is the first, I guess, where they were conjoined at the back of the head. And mm-hmm. there was the ability to actually separate them. So they the had two guillotine. separate brains, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, enough of the guillotine talk. We know you guys it remember. It. We know it wasn't uh, guillotine. Come on. You guys remember those like real famous uh, conjoined twins that were at the head and they're like they're like the they're I guess they're the girls, American, the girls. Yeah. yeah. And they're talking about like dating and like, you know, like mm. like the one is just the one is clearly just does has to do whatever the, the, the main one wants to do. So it was always very interesting. Too. Man, there was a set of conjoined twins. Um, there were Chinese in mm-hmm. the 1800s and they came to the United States as part of like a it's terrible as part of like a circus yeah. um but then they ended up settling in North Carolina and uh marrying two sisters and they had like a yeah. situation where one would go into like a, a sleep or like coma like state during his brother's um special time with his brother's wife yeah sure you would yeah yeah <laughs> do you guys remember that fairly brothers movie with the conjoined twins it was stuck on that, you yeah what were they mm. thinking what were they thinking about that movie? What do you mean? It was terrible. It <laughs> it's was, a recipe it was for also, comedic success, it was also bro. Risk, it was too risky and terrible. It's the ultimate it just, buddy comedy. Yeah. There's not enough of them to be offended. You know, it's not like... That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I think I that's what they're well, going And of all 10 of them on their asses. Yeah. I might have offended two but listeners <laughs> today calling them Siamese. Okay, guys. Yeah. Um, classes... <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Let me let me <clears throat> get it together. Reset. <laughs> Got to get it together here, guys. Uh, classes at the Af- Av- classes at the Avicenna University in Kabul, Afghanistan, resumed this week under the new Taliban government, and things they were a little different. A cur- Where's Becky? Yes, <laughs> she's not coming back. She's, a, yeah. a curtain hung down the middle of college classrooms across the entire country, as well as the Avicenna University in Kabul, dividing male and female students. Oh, boy. Yep. That's so. step one. I can't believe they're even in the building. I can't believe. Yeah, I can't believe the place is open. Pretty surprised, guys. The purpose of the sheet, um, which was described in a crayon scrawled memo <laughs> sent via pigeon from Taliban's Minister of Education and Book Burning, read... The sheet is a courtesy for the male students so they aren't distracted by the beheadings of the female students when they give incorrect answers. <laughs> Got him. That's on one tonight. Same guillotine, huh? <laughs> a lot of guillotine stories in the TikTok. <laughs> the move was met with widespread criticism across the internet. However, early reports indicate that the average GPAs of the students are up an entire point. So. They just put the curtain up and all of a sudden all the women just disappear. Just a Taliban <laughs> takes them like, where'd they go? Uh, <laughs> the Don't curtain. look on the other side of the curtain. <laughs> yeah, they'll want to show you a magic trick. I will make all the women disappear. It's ridiculous. They can't be learning the same thing, right? Like there's like uh, it, it's 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 kind of different in each um, city, in each university. Like a lot of people didn't go back to school. Honestly, it, it's a fucking it's a farce anyway. The guys it, are learning something mm. and then the girls are learning how to like, you know, cook cook meals be home for the guys stuff like that not be mm. out in public stay like that's just playing house it feels Jeez. a lot like a presser again that the taliban is trying to do so yeah. much like press yeah. shit i don't yeah. know what the fuck to do um and finally guys let's take it back to, uh, to israel um here's some good news if you're a terrorist six palestinian prisoners all terrorists escaped a prison in northern uh, israel on monday morning in an incident that the prison is calling quote totally very rare so uh yeah a day before the breakout the most senior prisoner of the group uh zakara zadubi requested a transfer into the cell where the five other prisoners were located to which prison officials obliged saying yeah totally uh the escape has launched a a big game of cards yeah yeah oh yeah we'll move (laughs) you right over (laughs) but it's no problem why didn't you ask earlier? The escape has launched a nationwide manhunt, and there's a lot of people asking, how did this happen? And that question is not rhetorical. Uh, there's an answer, and the answer is the blueprint of the Gilboa prison was available online on the website of the architectural firm that designed the jail. Nice. Mm. Cool. Nice. So. Okay. Easy that's to TikTok plan, Easy to plan an escape, but that. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Major beef there. Come on. And they beheaded all the guards. <laughs> yeah, with the guillotine. <laughs> Man, we got six terrorists on the loose. Um, yeah, that yeah. sucks. Pretty yeah, a terrible. lot more than that. <laughs> mm, well, I agree. Um, guys, let's talk about our partner today, Paint Your Life. Uh, gift season's coming up. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna let me. Wes wrote a little uh, copy yep. here. Let me, let me read Wes's. We hey, switched. guys and gals. Uh, you want to wow someone? I mean, really wow them with an original and thoughtful gift? Then you need to try PaintYourLife.com. If you were like me, uh, one of the only ways to show your love is with gift giving or acts of service. You know, I'm not saying any words of affirmation. That's for pansies. No, I show my love <laughs> with material gifts. And let me tell you something. A painting is as good as it gets for someone like me. When I heard that PaintYourLife.com, or when I heard that at PaintYourLife.com, uh, I thought, what a great idea. It must be so expensive. But guess what? Turns out paintings are incredibly affordable and uh, really the deal of the century. So you might want to get a professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo at a truly affordable price right over there at PaintYourLife.com. It's quick and easy, and you can get a hand-painted portrait about three weeks. It's meaningful, personal, can be cherished forever. And uh, my favorite gift is the painting my lady got me, which is the one where I'm shirtless <laughs> holding a chihuahua. Right? Ah, that would have given it away. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. Paintyourlife.com. There's no risk. Seriously, guys, it's an awesome gift. Uh, there's a bunch of gift giving seasons coming up. Get on it right now. It comes with free shipping, which is friggin insane. And uh, you can get 20% off, uh, off your first painting uh, if you use our code. And here's how you do it. You text the word FACTOR, F-A-C-T-O-R, to 64,000. That's text FACTOR to 64,000. Get 20% off and free shipping. Uh, I promise your mother, grandmother, girlfriend, fraternity house, sorority house, or wherever you hang are going to get a kick out of it uh, and love it. So celebrate the moments that matter ma most. Uh, terms and conditions apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. Again, text the word FACTOR to 64,000, 64,000. Yeah, I mean, short of like an actual organ, it's like the best gift you can get a family mm -hmm. member. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Um, all right. One more sponsor to talk about. It's Caliper CBD longtime sponsor. And you know why it's a longtime sponsor? Because a lot of our fans order it and love it. So they keep coming back to us because they know that it works and we know that it works and our fans know that it work. Um, and that's why they, they you know, they continue to be our great sponsor. You want some help with, uh, you know, stress, um, pain, soreness, getting to sleep. Caliper CBD is perfect. Um, I used it to, to help me with sleep, put a little of my tea before bed and boom out. It's a, uh, it's amazing. And it's THC free. So, you know, no guilt about, you know, feeling like, uh, you're, you're going to get high. It doesn't get you high. Um, you can, you can be fully functional, go to, you know, do your work, um, and just have a productive, productive day. Uh, just, you know, just feel a little more relaxed. Um, I was skeptical of, of CBD, but, um, you know, I tried it and it actually does work and it really has, uh, has, uh, it, it can really change your life. So I would, really suggest giving it a try. Um, it's the only clinically proven fast acting CBD it delivers 30 times more CBD in the first 30 minutes versus CBD oil. And, uh, you get all the benefits of CBD in just 10 minutes. Some oils can take an hour to absorb. You want this stuff to work immediately. And it does. It's developed by food science experts with decades of experience, rigorously tested for purity and quality. And it comes in convenient, easy to use packs. I think Mark said he ordered a new one. Um, like a lemon. Yeah, it's like the lemon. It's kind of like the fast acting ones that will got where you can like mm -hmm. just, shoot yeah. them or put them but they have a new lemon flavor yeah. delicious oh, nice. and then i got the classic of course there you go. Go. like a little lemonade um 20 milligrams each packet like i said thc free no high all natural vegan non-gmo um mixes easily with any food or drink try it you'll love it get 20 percent off your first order when you use promo code factor at trycaliper.com slash factor you can try caliper cbd risk-free for 30 days if you don't love it they'll give you a full refund that's trycaliper.com slash factor don't forget promo code factor for 20 percent off your first order um, all right, guys, last story of the day. Uh, you guys have all heard of Dubai, right? You guys, you guys know what Dubai is, right? It's the UAE. metropolis. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's the metropolis that just pretty much sprouted out of the desert in a matter of decades in the in the United Arab Emirates and has become a playground for the world's wealthiest people and celebrities. Um, we'll wait until you get a load of Tolosa, the vision of billionaire and former Walmart executive Mark Lore. So Mark is Walmart's the Walmart's version of Dubai. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's 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 not <laughs> quite Walmart yet, but it's right, okay. it's gonna be something. Uh, Mark is the latest billionaire to throw his name in the hat of billionaires with grand ideas and too much money, and has unveiled his plans for Tolosa, which is essentially a sustainable utopia in the middle of the fucking desert. Um, from the CNN article, the ambitious. 150,000 acre proposal promises eco-friendly architecture, sustainable energy production, and a uh, purportedly drought-resistant water system. A so-called 15-minute city design will allow residents to access their workplaces, schools, and amenities within a quarter-hour commute of their homes. Okay? Um, And I'm going to play you a video from the Tolosa website. This guy's serious. Like, he's he's ready to get this thing going. drought-resistant? Um. Yeah. Well, uh, drought. Gonna, drought resistant water. This is gonna yeah. piss uh Northern California off if this con- if this new city can just create rain out of the fucking sky. Yeah. Um. So here's the uh, video. This means the highest purpose. It was a term coined by Aristotle. It's about individuals in society coming together to reach their fullest potential. What we're trying to do is combine sort of the best of different cities in the world and bring it together. So if you think about Tolosa being as vibrant and diverse as a New York City, combined with efficiency, safety, and cleanliness of a city like Tokyo, combined with the social services, the sustainability, and the Burning governance man. model of a city like Stockholm, we are going to be the most open, the most fair, and the most inclusive city in the world. We're taking a stab at what we call equitism here. What if you can pay the same taxes that you pay today but get the best social services of any country in the world. That's equitism. I'm in. Sounds this pretty guy, good, huh? Sounds like this guy's trying to build the. He's like the guy from The Simpsons. What is it called? The monorail. This guy's full of shit. <laughs> he literally yeah. had a yeah. time lapse of Burning Man get, getting put up. <laughs> this guy has no plan and no mm. intentions of building a city. Where is he going to put take this your magic run. city that um, sounds impossible to build? So he's already hired a fucking architecture firm. In the air. Yeah, the they're looking <laughs> is Akon at involved. <laughs> no, no, they're, it's going to. So in order to get this thing off the ground, all he needs is four hundred billion dollars um, in a location, which he's already apparently scouting uh, Utah, Nevada, Texas, Idaho, Arizona or the Appalachian region. Um, I would suggest against the Appalachian region. Oh, um, he's Mark asking for four hundred billion dollars. Yeah. Um, so he's already hired the architecture firm, the uh, Bajarkal Ingalls Group, which is just the name of a guy or B.I.G. for short. And it's uh, looking like he's going to he's, he's serious about it. He uh, quote the first phase of construction which would accommodate 50,000 residents across across 1500 acres comes with an estimated 25 billion dollar price tag and the whole project would be expected to be 400 billion with the city reaching its target population of 5 million within 40 years bullshit yeah this is the fire festival times a million yeah. that's all this agreed is. Yeah. this is bullshit also it's crazy thinking about the fire festival let's talk about that for a second so obviously the things that went wrong at the fire festival were the 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 plan was way too ambitious or, or what they wanted to deliver was way too ambitious. They, that guy, Billy, okay. it, it would have taken him two years probably of development of infrastructure. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, most importantly, what he was essentially doing is saying, let's take a music festival. Right. We, we've talked about Bonner on the show where camping is acceptable. Right. To normal humans, camping is acceptable. Mm-hmm. And let's expect our audience who are selling an uber, uber VIP experience to be generally okay with camping, which they never will be. You can't take people who are used to the finest fucking things in life and bring them into a situation where it's not perfect because they're the biggest complainers. It, it's it's that's what that's the same fucking issue this guy's going to run to if in fact he's not just running some sort of gigantic scam. It sounds like he's running a scam. He's like all I, all we need is a little belief. Right. Exactly. Uh, if everyone just believes a little bit, and it's then like, four hundred billion dollars too. It, uh, if you've ever waited tables, it's like bringing the most difficult customers that you've had in your career all together for one night at a dinner service. That's he what that's what he's doing. He knows it's not going to work. I, I have an I have an alternate theory. One is he's trying to take the money and run. Go on, take the money and run. But potentially he's he's auditioning for a role as Elon Musk city planner on Mars. That's the, that's mm. the alternate there. Like he knows this isn't going to work like that well. But if he proves that he almost got it to Elon or he had the system in place, Elon might hire him as a city planner on Mars. I don't know. The um, the architect said that they want to, like, take like the, uh, you know, social and environmental aspects and care of Scandinavian culture and then the freedom and opportunity of America. So he's just this place is going to need like the world's largest walls around yeah. it. If We're going to have the hottest women. We're going right. to have the best rules. 
Yeah. It doesn't work. I mean, no. the, the, yeah. the, the, people always say that like, oh, yeah, man, we want to look at what Scandinavia does. That's culturally built over generations and right. generations and generations. You can't fucking do it. There, there's a there's a city in California called California City. You should read about it. Some guy tried to do this. Guess what? It was a fucking scam. It never works. It's always a scam or it doesn't work. Dude, this guy was the uh, uh, like an executive at Walmart. He right. understands what human beings do when they get inside of the location. <laughs> yeah. This isn't going to work. They fuck no. shit up. Yeah, it's <laughs> going to end gonna up. Work. It's going to end up being like a little Reno or like a Vegas where like it's like a super nice resort that rich people can go to. But no one is going to live together in this utopia where everyone's equal. There's no oh, class. The politics are going to yeah. be perfect oh. and everyone's going to be so happy and the healthcare is going to be perfect. And yeah, the what's gonna the be higher perfect and purpose bullshit. when you're bringing in when, when you need a certain level of cash, right, to, mm -hmm. to come into this community right and and what did it take to get to that level of cash right you're right. used to a fucking certain culture mm -hmm. you're just going to abandon that and find find a common <laughs> ground with your fellow man in this yeah. fucking yeah, this, fake city right. exactly. this weird ass city is more my speed um what are they going to kick people out if they if they act up like because it seems Listen, like you're going to need people perfect, right? he's going to have to bust the workers in from outside the city because oh, yeah. he can't live with the same people that they're serving because that just then that right die. there just doesn't work they're gonna, yeah. so many workers going to die in the in the yeah. fucking middle of the desert heat putting this <laughs> yeah. utopia together <laughs> you're waving to your maid as you drive by on your bicycle being like hey just, have a nice day just yeah. like every time you drive by the highway and there's like little flowers everywhere there's like flowers <laughs> and shoes over top of shoes with shoelaces tied over top everywhere because ten thousand yeah. workers are going to die hundred thousand yeah. workers are going to die putting this thing together a hundred percent look yeah. look all you have to do is going to a fucking porta john man just shut the door in a porta john and look around and look at the inside of that fucking porta john that's what's going to happen <laughs> to your fucking city dude yeah. the, the closest the closest thing that's happened i guess is the villages right in some respects but like the common yeah. ground there is they're all gonna die right right <laughs> right yeah, they're all they on the way they don't the care they don't have out. to work no they yeah. don't have to work exactly yeah people it, are gonna have to work in tolosa yeah. jesus yeah. christ well yeah. okay so walmart Presumably. has bentonville right do you guys know about bentonville arkansas no. So it, it's where Walmart is headquartered and they have this town. It's like a picturesque town. And Walmart in this middle of Arkansas town brings in like a fucking Michelin chef, right? Like in the okay. town yeah, square, yeah. there's like higher end shit that you'd ever fucking find. And they try to do it. But there's also this sense from people I've talked to that live in Bentonville. There's also this sense of like, don't fuck up. Like, like you can't be walking around Bentonville ripping a heater straight up. Just can't right. be. There's no smoking cigs in Bentonville because someone's gonna be like, oh, you're smoking. Oh, you work at the firm. And this is a firm town. This is a company town. Remember that? Remember what happened with company towns yes. in the uh, the turn of the century? They were giving up fucking uh, fake notes for currency. It wasn't even wasn't even money. <laughs> and you could only spend it at the town store at the company store. Mm -hmm. It's like a horror movie, the level of judgment. If you go into Tolosa oh, and you're yeah. ripping heaters or acting up, you get a little too drunk in Tolosa. It's like uh, the town, the townspeople that that think they belong there and you don't. They might like murder you. They'll like, stone you. They'll kill you in Tolosa. Dude, <laughs> yeah. just like, wait. Just, some some angry parent literally like barged into a fucking principal's office in Arizona with zip ties over a mask so, mandate. Yeah, yeah. You wait till people people start raising kids in Tolosa. You oh. wait and you see how fucking utopian your fucking area Equitarianism is. Equitarianism was what he called it. More like Equitism, judgmental, yeah. judgmentalism. Like you, you, oh, yeah. anyone that thinks everyone that would go to Tolosa thinks that they deserve it more than everyone else, even in Tolosa. And it would be a fucking shit show. Yeah, it would an, be a it's nightmare. A, it's an experiment on, uh, you know, just watch it. I, I hope it happens. Yeah. You know what's going to happen in Tolosa is mm -hmm. they're going to try to do it without police. And then it's going to be DUI fucking central, bro. I'll tell you that much because it's going to be a bunch of rich people with little responsibility getting hammered drunk and driving around their utopian place. And then it's going to be like that fucking diplomat, that Russian diplomat that was hammered drunk and murdered that person in D.C. in the late 90s. And they're like, sorry, man, I'm a diplomat. Not much you can do about it. And they're gonna be like, fuck, we need police. Then the police are going to come and it's not going to be Tolosa anymore, man. No, they need as many police as they do citizens. In Hundred, Tolosa. but you know they're going to start without be, the police. It's never right. going to be Tolosa because no. it's it's a fucking fantasy. The firemen right. of Tolosa. Who's going to be the yeah. fucking fireman in Tolosa? Bro? <laughs> who let exactly. this guy? Who let no. this guy put together a, a commercial? He hired a oh. firm, Mark. You should How, see the yeah. website he's got up. It's amazing. I'm sure. I mean, who hasn't told him this is who? 
does he not trust anyone or is all yes men? Does, is there no one close no, it, to him? It's 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 the guy, it's this Bajarkal Ingles group that is the the architect that is really the mastermind behind They're stealing pumping this guy's money. Up. They're pumping him yeah. up. They've already done stuff in, in Japan, they've done stuff mm. other places, and he just wants to do it on like a ten times grander scale. So this is just another another big grab for them and then they'll do yeah. it again oh, yeah, somewhere else. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're, this is their last project they ever need to do. What yeah, makes exactly. America <laughs> a wonderful place? Yeah. Right. Also makes this impossible. Unfortunately. Exactly. exactly. No, you can't do this in America. This it, never, is, it never work. This is literally quite literally Hive Island on a scale of of about 100,000 grand. OK, so and but do yeah. there be Hive, a islands, common... Hive Island's like 75 to 150 people on a little island. This is right. five million people. Oh, dude, I this get is stressed. five million people. I get stressed when I think about my compound that I'm eventually yeah. going to build. And I get stressed about you two. I, I know think, thinking about how <laughs> we're all going to get add a single more mm-hmm. person. Every single human being you add is, is more stress. Five million people in a utopia. That ain't going to work. Now, Hive Island is just going to be look, it's going to be come as you come as you co- come as you are. Leave as you please. Seasonal, probably. You're, you're, uh, yeah, it's like you yeah. stay for a couple months, you leave for a couple months. Chip into the community <laughs> pot, yeah. barbecue every evening. Yes. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, we'll put Full together barbecue. But it's gonna be like a Noah's Ark, right? We're gonna have one of everyone, and everyone's gonna have a function, a function, an actual right. purpose there. And you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to pull your weight at High Island. It's not gonna be just a party, unlike fucking. Do you know yeah. that cocaine's gonna be great in Telosa, though? Oh, it'll be amazing. You yeah. think? You think that cocaine's gonna be good in Telosa? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, that's the draw. Uh, the other thing they said they were gonna do is, um, is uh, it's <laughs> wait gonna till, wait till someone's dog shits on someone else's lawn in Telosa. Uh, murder. Oh. Yeah, they're, they say they're going to let uh, residents participate in the like the, the budgeting process and uh, they'll have like a community endowment where uh, residents will have a like, shared ownership of the land. It's just it's such yeah, a fucking it's a giant it's, it's PTA insane. meeting or a giant right. council meeting of a city right. like you can't that those don't work. The, no. like, it does work. It does work when there's a um, sexually eg- eg- enigmatic cult leader at, at the center. Sure. Exactly. That's exactly. that's when it does work. Yes. And they'll, that, that will develop in Tolosa. But they can't do that to five million people. No cults ever gotten five million people. You get a Wilt Chamberlain in there, level cult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, yeah. guy's, cult this guy's out of his mind. Yeah, the ego, so. the ego on this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's got unbelievable. A, he's I'm gonna got start pumping it though, just so I can get into some of the Telosa um, like message boards and communities. They they accept everyone, Pat. That's what he said. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not true. Not to yeah. mention, like, <laughs> yeah, it's not true. yeah, I mean, like you were saying, the first people that get there, they own Tolosa. Everyone else after that is just scum. Oh, they hate them yeah, with a yeah. passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's you the wanna... worst? What's the worst we can get away with on these people? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The garbage men can of Tolosa. We strangle bro. them a little bit. Right. Do you know what it's going to be? Is outside outside of fucking Tolosa is going to be the slums of Tolosa, bro. That's what it's going to yeah. be. Yes. Yes. It's, it's going to be like hierarchies. The like, trailer parts of Tolosa. That's where the maids live. Yeah. Key West has a conch system. If you're born there, you're conch. If you've been there for 20 years, you're half mm. conch. That's key fucking West. Yeah. They're, like that's like, uh, you know, yeah. you get drunk, trashy. That's where Jimmy Buffett's from. And they have like, come on. The, yeah. Tolosa. If you move to Tolosa in the second batch, you're chopped yeah. liver. You're chopped liver. Yeah. Um, but if you want to check out uh, the website, it's uh, City of Tolosa dot com that's t-e-l-o-s-a dude um just wait till someone starts fucking peddling herbal life in telosa just wait because it's gonna <laughs> happen are we, sure like, are we sure it's not a joke from the beginning was there like an anagram or something with telosa like fuck you it does like, sound you, a little bit like loser like you're you you, you schmuck or something no yeah. telosa is from, from the a greek movie word. or something it's from telosa is from the greek word telos uh which is in uh it, he was a con man higher purpose okay. it does sound like a shitty movie plot mark where we shouldn't like it like yeah. nilbog in in yeah. uh in um Solid uh, and green or whatever, like his <laughs> Nilbog and troll, troll movie. Two. Yeah, troll yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, no, the ger- good old fashioned German miak over here. Nilbog. I think we're getting- <laughs> Nilbog. Goblin back. Goblin. Was, the movie was called Troll, not Goblin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we're getting had. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. Um, all right. That's going to do for hard factor. Thank you for listening. Uh, leave us a voicemail. We got those coming up and a five star review. Five one two two seven oh fourteen eighty or um, <laughs> I know uh, we'll build it in the desert in yeah. the middle of the desert. <laughs> yeah. 
In, in Nevada, it won't turn into a giant casino eventually. Why right. hasn't already, anyone done built, that twice? Why hasn't anyone right. built yeah. here before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they already did this. The horrors will come in eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Ten Ruins years to wildfires, man. Just, but, but don't be degenerates, though. Right. Just be yeah. like perfect humans. Oh, right. my God. Be sustainable. Um, and then send a voice memo to hardfactorvoicemail at gmail.com. Check out some merch. We got Fat Boy Fall um, merch coming out by the first day of fall. So be on the lookout for that. But most importantly, have a great fucking day. Hardfactor.com. Patreon.com slash hardfactor.